the Nintendo Entertainment System, to say the very least a console which has its fair share of platformers in its library. For instance, Super Mario Bros., Mega Man, Blaster Master, Metroid, Contra, Probotector in Europe, Castlevania, Kirby's Adventure, Battletoads, Ninja Gaiden, Ghost and Goblins, Kid Icarus, A Boy and His Blob, Prince of Persia, and I could go on and on. As such, for many, the platformer genre has a certain measure of nostalgia to it. Shovel Knight, released in 2014 on PC, and it seems pretty much everything else under the sun, is thus intended to be a tribute to the platformers of the NES era, and serves that purpose pretty damn well. Originally funded through Kickstarter, the game was developed by a team named Yacht Club, Games, made up of former members of WayForward Technologies, who, as we can tell from their release history with games such as the Shantae series, Blood Rain Betrayal, Contra 4, and DuckTales Remastered, are very, very good at making platformers, a trend which, if critics are to be believed, seems to be continuing here with almost unanimous acclaim from all four corners of the internet. But why, I hear you ask? Well, let's have a look, shall we? The first thing that should be cleared up is that this game is not by any means designed to actually run on an original NES. Yacht Club said themselves on their own website that Shovel Knight's design brief was essentially, what if development for the NES never stopped, and how would an 8-bit game feel and play if developed today? So understandably, they broke a good few rules of the NES when making this game, but retained the 8-bit graphical aesthetic, and in my opinion, that was a very good move. It makes it feel like a modern game in a retro game's clothing. It retains the nostalgic charm of the retro platform while simultaneously not being dragged down and made stale by any self-imposed technological limitations. It does, however, still draw on some old NES traditions. For instance, much like many NES games with the faintest shred of story, the plot is touched upon at the beginning in the form of a slideshow. It tells of how Shovel Knight and Shield Knight, once famed adventurers, were separated in an accident whilst exploring the Tower of Fate, with Shield Knight apparently dying. Shovel Knight eventually returns from a long exile, during which time the evil Enchantress and her Order of No Quarter have claimed dominion over the land. It is now up to Shovel Knight, adamant that Shield Knight is still alive, to defeat them. Interestingly enough though, unlike the games that so heavily inspired it, Shovel Knight's plot is not just a frame for the gameplay. What would otherwise be an inconsequential excuse plot is expanded on to great lengths in this game. Just for instance, bits of every character's personality in the game's lore are revealed through dream sequences between some levels, conversations between Shovel Knight and the Order of No Quarter as he meets and fights them, as well as the people he encounters in the towns, all of whom have something either funny, useful, or lore-related to say, and oftentimes it's all three of these. In addition to that, especially near the end, the story sometimes gets really, really really emotional, more so than you'd expect from a game of its type. It manages to maintain an almost perfect balance between keeping you sated with the gameplay and pondering the questions that appear as you follow Shovel Knight in his quest. I might also add, very rarely do I find myself actually trying to talk to everyone in a game just for the giggles that they might elicit from me. The 8-bit inspiration is also very apparent in the gameplay, with many, many elements harking back to some memorable classics. At its core, it's standard platforming fare in a sort of Zelda 2 cross with Mega Man vein. You can swing your shovel to attack enemies, do a DuckTales-esque stomp attack, pick up treasure and items from fallen enemies, and, well, since your main weapon is a shovel, it stands to reason that you can also dig up piles of dirt with it. There are also hidden areas to be found where you can obtain extra gold, music sheets with which you can unlock tracks from the game's soundtrack to listen to later on, and in some cases, hidden merchants who will sell you relics, special items with a variety of effects. For instance, the wand, which lets you shoot fireballs, the phase locker, which gives you a few seconds of invulnerability, Trowpel chalices, which let you store Trowpel Icor, a magical liquid with three variants, each with their own effect, and a fishing rod, which lets you fish for things. In towns, you could also purchase items which increase your maximum health and magic, as well as later in the game, upgrades for your shovel and armor, which give you various different special abilities, or sometimes not. The levels are all connected via a map screen, which could not be any more of a reference to Super Mario Bros. 3 if it tried. It even comes complete with Mario 3-style bonus levels and extra bosses to fight. Some of these were added in by Kickstarter backers and thus have their own unique style too. As for the levels themselves, they all have a recognisable visual design styled after the Knight of the Order of No Quarter they serve as home to, right down to the enemies and even the hazards you can run into. This gives each level a veritable bucket load of personality, serving as more than just levels but almost like extensions of the Knight's personalities and characters, and in the case of King Knight perhaps his ego too. These levels can, however, especially late in the game, get very difficult and at times a bit irritating, so perhaps it's a good thing that the traditional life system is done away with, and instead when you die, you lose some of your accumulated gold. If you then return to the spot where you died, you're given an opportunity to retrieve it. Alternatively, if you like a challenge, then the checkpoints which can be found throughout the levels can be broken for extra gold, something which I find really quite ingenious. The soundtrack is absolutely spectacular, perhaps unsurprisingly, as it was created by none other than Jake 
Vert Kaufman, whose other works include the Shantae series, and those who watch my review of that will know just how much I love the soundtrack in it, and here, it is no different. Each track fits its respective level like a glove, and to boot, the soundtrack's 8-bit sound is more than just an aesthetic. It was created using Famitracker, a program which directly emulates the NES's sound chip. As a result, every single track on this soundtrack can be made to play on official Nintendo hardware. Well, alright, provided you have a special sound chip that was only used in a handful of Konami games in Japan, most notably the Japanese version of Castlevania 3, but even so, that is pretty mind-blowing when you think about it. The various different versions of the game all have their own different features as well. The Xbox One and PlayStation versions each have their own boss exclusive to those versions. For the Xbox One, it's the Battletoads, and the PlayStation version includes a face-off with God of War's Kratos. In the Wii U and 3DS versions, you can use the touchscreen during levels to switch between obtained relics as well as view your gear, or even in the Wii U version, make posts to Miiverse and view posts made by others at the same point that you're at in a sort of Dark Souls-like fashion. Also in the Wii U version, the game can be played with any of the controls available for the Wii and Wii U, though the old classic controller is my personal favourite. The 3DS version also has has Street Pass functionality in the form of Street Pass Arena, a mode wherein you record a short clip of yourself in a small level, which is then sent out via Street Pass for other players to compete against. There also exists a Shovel Knight Amiibo figure for the Nintendo versions. Incidentally, it's the only third-party Amiibo to date, which when used with the game unlocks a new play mode, wherein rather than paying with gold for relics or upgrades, a leveling system is introduced, which unlocks a new item or upgrade with each level reached, with progress and unlocks tied to the Amiibo itself. There are also some new items which can only be unlocked and used in this mode though most of them are just slightly different versions of the other relics. Using the amiibo on the Wii U version also unlocks a cooperative two-player mode. Suffice to say, if you're looking at the console versions of this game, you'll certainly be spoiled for choice, though my personal preference is for the Wii U and 3DS versions because of the additional touchscreen and street pass functionality and amiibo support. In summary, if you were looking for a retro-style game which really feels like a modern one, then look no further than Shovel Knight. The gameplay harks gracefully back to its NES forefathers whilst still at the same time being innovative and fresh. The 8-bit soundtrack is nothing short of fantastic, and even the plot is surprisingly good, balancing itself almost perfectly with the gameplay. It is the very definition of a modern classic, and a game that should not under any circumstances be passed up. In the UK, the price ranges from £10.99 to £12.99, depending on the version you buy, and as far as I can tell in the USA, it's $14.99 across all platforms, and I would say that at that price, this game is most definitely worth it. The game's soundtrack, as well as a remix album entitled Strike the Earth Shovel Knight Arranged, are both available to download from Band Camp, and there should now be links on screen to both of these albums if you'd like to do so. You should also be able to find the links in the description of this video. Shovel Knight also has an additional campaign called Plague of Shadow, starring Plague Knight, which in itself has so much content that I decided to do an entire quick review of it. There should now be a link on screen and in the description. But it doesn't stop there. Also coming soon is a second expansion entitled Spectre of Torment, starring Spectre Knight, due in the spring. After that, there's even more content slated to come out. A battle mode, a third DLC campaign featuring King Knight, and a gender swap mode mode, which has yet to be detailed. Whether or not there'll be anything else after that remains to be seen. Before I go, let me just say a massive, massive thank you to Yacht Club Games themselves for their amazing communication and for letting me have the Wii U version for free. You guys are amazing and I cannot wait to see what the future has in store for Shovel Knight and beyond. I have been Deuterium the Sentient Mattress and this has been my review of Shovel Knight. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Ta-ta! Made up of former members of the first thing that should be cleared up is that this game, yeah, what would otherwise be an insult, <sighs> music sheets with which installed after the night of no, all right, provided you have a special sound chip that's in the. Steal my button!